All right, I just had my blood drawn uh, because I did my first gene therapy 14 days ago. Full of statin. I had two shots uh, in my sides, my obliques. The gene therapy is meant to increase muscle and strength, and we're monitoring 20 other organs. It has effects like slowing speed of aging and reducing epigenetic age. Brian Johnson just started his anti-aging gene therapy. Would it be the key to extend his lifespan and reverse his aging process? or would it cause him more serious health problems? If you stay until the end of this video, you will learn if gene therapy is the key to live longer and healthier, or maybe not. Our first stop brings us to Prospera, a private city and special economic zone on the Caribbean island of Roatan, which belongs to the Central American country Honduras. This city is an autonomous zone with a private government and its own fiscal and regulatory and legal architecture. Prospera is being known because of its flexible regulatory code that enables biotech companies to rapidly proceed clinical trials and try experimental treatments. Because of its flexible regulatory solutions, Minicircle, a gene therapy biotech startup company, was able to establish in the island and start very quickly with their gene therapy trials. Prospera has its own controversies and having low regulations does not mean something necessarily good. Medical history has plenty of examples where new treatments or drugs just fail and end up causing more harm than what they expected. But this is topic for other videos to discuss of the ethics of this particular area and treatment, but rather to focus on what is that this gene therapy is about and what can we expect, because we wonder or not this is the future and gene therapy is here to stay. Brian Johnson did not reveal the exact name of this company, but based on the treatment and the location, we can assume it's mini circle, which has been very popular in the media. I will first talk about what gene therapy is and what is not, and then I will go deep into the research about folistatin, which has been quite popular in the bodybuilding world for quite a while. So let's start. So now I'm going to explain what are the different types of genetic treatments. The first one is we have gene therapy. Gene therapy involves introducing a foreign gene or a transgene into a cell or into an organism. And the point is to supply with this gene either because this organism or cell is missing this gene, either have a faulty copy which is not working properly or is trying to enhance the amount of the production because maybe they have this gene but it's not producing enough so they want to produce more. It could also be that they just want to include a gene that is not normally present in this organism and you want to introduce um, just to overexpress a gene from a different organism. In this case it will be a transgene. And in the case of this gene therapy with folistatin, they, this is a normal human protein and what they try is to overexpress or expressing a higher amount of statin in specific tissues to then cause a specific effect, which I'm going to explain later in this video. Then there's another types of, let's say, genetic treatments are being clinically investigated, which is genetic editing. And what is clear here is that in gene therapy, the purpose is to introduce a, a different gene, but it doesn't mean that the gene will stay there forever. It could be or it's just been done for a specific amount of time depending on the length of the treatment. This does not mean that it's been incorporated in the genome. But in the case of gene editing, well, the, the main purpose is to actually change your genome or your DNA of the cell. And this is the case now, for example, with CRISPR, which is, um, I've talked in many videos about CRISPR and now it's being approved and it's getting approved in many countries, the first CRISPR therapies to treat, for example, sickle cell anemia. And the idea of this treatment is to actually modify the genome of the patient or the cells they're treating. And this is a bit different from gene therapy, which is trying to introduce the full gene rather than editing an existing gene. Lastly, we have gene silencing which is also getting 
been popular in the last decades and it's also been clinically investigated, which is the idea to treat, to silence a specific gene. Rather, there is, let's say, an expression of a faulty gene, a, a, a protein that it might, might cause a disease, and you, instead of fixing it, you want to silence it, then this is a different way. You may or may not need to edit the gene, but rather you're trying to, to change the epigenetics, which epigenetics is basically the expression of a specific gene. And expression, just to put it in simple words, is the amount of protein that you have. The more you have, the more it's expressed, the lower you have, the lower it's expressed. So with gene silencing, the, the aim of these treatments would be to decrease or rather eliminate the expression of a specific gene. And this could be, as I mentioned, because the gene is not working properly or have a mutation, or it might be as the goal of this specific treatment is to uh, inhibit a specific uh, gene of interest or a protein, which then will cause an effect. If we think about it, just why would this make sense? Many drugs work in this way. They target a specific protein or enzyme in the body and they block the effect either partially or completely, and this causes the specific effect in your body. And the, the idea of genetic silencing, it could have many similar applications, but will be very specific to a gene of interest. So it could be an alternative to, let's say, many drugs that people use every day. So these are the different types of genetic treatments that have been studied, and they have a lot of application, a lot of potential to treat many diseases and to improve human performance. And we can expect that in the next years, many of them will be approved for different treatments. What are the biggest risks and pitfalls? The main issue is the delivery of the DNA it can be done either by viral vectors, which are molecules similar to real viruses, or in the case of MiniCircle, they use plasmids, which are circular DNA molecules that have been modified and amplified bacteria. That's why the name of MiniCircles. These DNA molecules are then packed into lipid molecules and delivered to the target cells. The biggest risks are that a piece of the DNA can integrate into the genome and then this can disrupt other genes. This can cause genotoxicity, which could lead to cancer. Another risk is the overexpression of any gene can be toxic, and more if this gene is usually not present in this organism. Something that has been a common problem in gene therapy is that the delivery method can be immunogenic and can create a immune response which can be very detrimental for the patient or it could prevent uh, follow-up treatments. Lastly, it could also be that it just does not work, either because the piece of DNA is not delivered to the cells correctly or is not being expressed or just the desired protein is expressed but it's not causing the desired effect. Folistatin is a protein coded by the FST gene and works by inactivating two proteins in your blood. Myostatin, which controls muscle hypertrophy and actinin, involved in follicle-stimulating hormone release. So here in the website of MiniCircle, they have this therapy called Folistatin 344 Plasma Therapy. What they claim is that this is well-researched, safe, and exceptionally effective. What they claim is that from a recent clinical trial they did, is that Folistatin gene therapy can increase muscle mass, increase bone density, increase cardiovascular fitness, increase telomere length, increase quality of life, and reduce fatigue. They also talk about a recent study in which folistatin plasmid therapy extend the mouse lifespan by 32.5%, which we're gonna go later into these publications. So the way folistatin works is, as I mentioned, was to by inhibiting myostatin and activin A. Most of the effect of folistatin gene therapy comes by inhibiting myostatin. This is a protein which decreases the muscle mass and the bone density. Think about myostatin as a control switch to prevent excessive tissue growth, especially from the muscle or the bone. Now, this could be a dose dependent. For individuals that are mutated in myostatin, they have shown to have higher muscle mass. There are different animals that have been 
have either mutations in the myostatin gene or they have been genetically modified and they have seen how the increase in muscle mass is just very clear on these animals. Even in humans, which have a mutation in the myostatin gene, has been termed as the Hercules gene because then they have produced more muscle than the average person. While this can sound good, there is a reason this exists and preventing the excessive growth of muscle can also prevent certain diseases to occur. This can work as a dose dependent in way you can decrease a little bit myostatin by increasing folistatin and then it increases the amount of bone density and muscle mass desired without so many repercussions. How is administered and how long it will last in your body? So this has always been a given concern in gene therapy is that you don't want necessarily the DNA to integrate and if it doesn't, how long will it stay in your body? Because maybe you want to be able to control the dose and only use it for a specific time and in a specific location of your body. For MiniCircle, what they do is that they administer directly to the subcutaneous fat and it will have a continuous expression of what they claim for 1.5 years. They also claim that only the cells at the site of injection are the ones that receive this piece of DNA, which are the ones that have been transformed or expressing this specific gene of interest, and it does not integrate into the chromosome, which will prevent disrupting other genes or creating a gene toxicity. They also claim they have a genetic kill switch encoded in the DNA where it can be used to destroy the plasmids in the presence of tetracycline as a way to maintain safety. The main outcomes of their plasmid therapy, this is what they claim, is that it's safe, a lot of patients have a lower body fat percentage, they lose fat, and they reduce their epigenetic clock. And what could assume that this would also increase the muscle hypertrophy. Lastly, another common concern with folistatin is that it not only inhibits myostatin, but it also inhibits activin, which is involved in folliculate stimulated hormone release, which is just involved in general for producing um, different hormones in your body involved in reproduction. And the way they try to protect it is that they, they claim here that their version of folistatin, what they can do is that they can modify the protein sequence in different areas that make it less with less binding affinity to activin, which then means that increasing the levels of folistatin here mostly binds to the myostatin and not to the activin which is involved in this follicular stimulating hormone release which is involved in general infertility. The main side effect that they reported is an increase in the LDL level which is known as the bad cholesterol and they claim that this can be easily addressed with a good diet and lifestyle practices and up to now less than 250 people have taken this gene therapy as of October 2023. So the publication I'm gonna focus right now is new intranasal and injectable gene therapy for healthy life extension. And this one was published in 2022 and it has different scientists from different parts of the world, from different institutions. And we can recall, for example, from the names George George, which is quite popular in the scientific world. In this study, they employ a high capacity cytomegalovirus vector, or CMV, which is effective and safe compared to other viral vectors. In this one, they try with two different genes. The Lomerous reverse transcriptase, or third, which is involved in the elongation of telomerase and telomere of the telomere, and telomere is involved in longevity and other processes, and also with folistatin, which is our gene of interest. The way they dosed this was that they were given these vectors either intranasal or as an injectable gene therapy to extend longevity. Amazingly, what they found is that that telomerase reverse transcriptase was able to extend the life cycle for 41.4% in the mice, and in the case of folistatin, it was able to increase the lifespan of the mice 32.5%. Besides the lifespan extension, this treatment improved the glucose tolerance, the physical performance, 
as well as preventing body mass loss and alopecia. It is important to highlight the safety of this process because CMV vectors do not integrate in the DNA, thereby mitigating the risk of insertional mutagenesis. What they conclude is that these CMV vectors can be used as a monthly inhaled gene therapy for delivering these specific genes. Now, looking at these results in mice, we could try to extrapolate which effects could be in humans, which motivates a lot of people to try this experimental approach with folistatin. While our major concern is always safety, we expect to see, hopefully soon, more data from this company regarding all the safety parameters of their clinical trial. We can just wish the best, and we hope also that more companies try to pick up and regulations will allow companies to be able to do more research and more clinical trials regarding gene therapy. If you like this video, please subscribe and comment below what is your opinion in gene therapy and in, with folistatin. And if safety has been proven widely, would you be willing to take and try this genetic therapy? If you're interested to know already a molecule that's been proven to extend the lifespan of humans, please watch my last video about Tarrant.